homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, today, uh, in a common year, you can't show all the problems that can come up with uh, your tomatoes. Now, tomatoes have problems with blight, and they have problems with, uh, with, uh, I'll get it out here. They have problems with viruses. They have problems with uh, calcium channel blocking. There's a whole bunch of issues that can come up with your tomatoes. And this video is designed to go back and look at all of the things that we have discussed on the channel about tomatoes to help you figure out what is going on with your tomato plant. Okay? Uh, we've done a lot of videos about tomatoes. I've never had a lot of problem with blight. Uh, but we'll talk about that and show you what blight looks like and how you can treat it. And There's a whole bunch of things that can go on. Uh, with your tomatoes and we're gonna go over that in this video so stay tuned and we'll get at it now we did uh, an entire video about blossom end rot and when you look at this what you see on the picture is a type of blossom end rot now blossom end rot is caused by a calcium problem and we did an entire video and you can go back and look at it and it talks about the chemistry. What you see here are tomatoes that are green that have blossom end rot. But let's let Joel describe what we do to conquer it a little better than me. Blossom end rot is caused by the inability of a plant to take up enough calcium. Now there are a lot of reasons that a plant might have a problem taking up calcium. There's too much nitrogen in the soil. Nitrogen bonds and keeps that calcium tied up. Too much acid in the soil. Acid will react with calcium hydroxide, which calcium ions, if you go back to your high school chemistry, calcium ions are the way it's transported in liquid. So too much uh, acidity in the soil will move that backwards. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. Uh, the plant could have a calcium channel problem uh, brought on by erratic watering uh, and just inavailability of calcium in the soil could be another one. All of it goes back to your high school chemistry. Now some folks are going to say that it's a watering problem but it's not just a watering problem. It's the availability of calcium for the plant to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a calcium supplement to our plants. Now here on our homestead, we get blossom end rot if we don't do this. We do not have a calcium deficiency. Let me say that again. Most, most land in the United States does not have a calcium deficiency. If you've got limestone anywhere around your property, you probably do not have a calcium deficiency. A lot of the little rocks that we dig up in our garden are limestone. So we don't have a calcium deficiency. But we do have a problem with uptake of calcium. And you saw how you can eliminate that. Now what I've got here, this is called hydrated lime. Now hydrated lime is a slaked lime that's already had water added to it. And what happens is is if you take slaked lime and you add water, it heats up to 140, 150 degrees. It gets hot. So if you do that, you get hydrated lime as the result. Now, hydrated lime is basically calcium hydroxide. So calcium hydroxide is partially insoluble. And you saw that in the, in the video about adding lime to your soil. So now, the type of lime I have here is hydrated lime, and it's powdery. See here? It's just a powder. Now, I've got on a glove, 
I normally don't wear gloves to apply this. I just apply it with my hands. But since we're going to do this with uh, on video, I'm going to wear a glove. The reason being, some people can be sensitive to that lime. You know, lime's an additive in concrete. Okay? You can add lime and concrete, cement, Portland cement, together and make a type of mortar. Okay? Or a whitewash or a stucco. Or, there's all kinds of things you do with lime. And that can be kind of caustic. Cement itself is kind of caustic. So, I'm going to go ahead and wear a glove. Normally, it doesn't bother me. Uh, my grandmother would mix her bug dust with lime when she dusted her potatoes or dusted her beans or whatever. She mixed it with lime and then spread it with her hands. But her old hands were pretty tough because she raised what she, what she uh, lived on. So, let's get over here to the tomatoes. Uh, I have, you can have this problem on tomatoes, peppers, and squash. Okay, you can have blossom end rot problems on tomatoes, peppers, and squash. Now, I generally don't have the problem on peppers and squash. I only have the problem on tomatoes. So, let's get over here to the romas. And the romas are just exactly like the determinants and indeterminates. I treat them exactly the same when it comes to blossom end rot. Okay, here we are at the very beginning of my row. Now... You'll notice that these tomatoes, I don't know how well you can see it, but they're just starting to bloom. It's that time that I like to apply lime to the tomatoes. I wait until they start to bloom in order to do this so that I know that the calcium is going to be available to them for the whole time that they're fruiting. So if I put it on too early, it's like they don't absorb it as well. If I put it on too late, I get blossom end rot in the first flush, okay? So I want to put it on now when the blooms are just setting on. And all you have to do is I take about that much and I put it right between each plant. And that's it. There's enough there. I'll put some on the other side of that one. It will not burn your plants. Okay? It won't burn your plants. So I put a little bit of that bloss put a little bit of that at each one. I'll go down the row and put some a little bit at each plant. And that's a whole lot of calcium if you think about the calcium ions. There's a lot of calcium right there. So that's how you prevent blossom end rot. Now let's talk about tomato viruses. The tomato you're looking at in this picture is actually a tomato virus, is actually a plant in my garden that has a virus. Okay? You can notice how the leaves are curled and and the plant stunted, that is caused by the virus. All right, let's talk about this tomato virus. Look at the leaves and notice how they're curling up. Now, leaf curl can be caused by a couple things, but in this instance, it's a virus. Notice the root ball, how it's not developed out. This root ball should be two or three times this size by now. So this tomato has the virus. Now, what am I going to do about it? Well, there's nothing you can do. you got to pull it out of your garden and get it the heck out of there. Second, spray your other plants. Not for, with an antiviral, but with uh, something like pyrethrin, malathion, anything that are going to keep the hopping insects that were on this off your other tomatoes. Because this virus is spread through fluid contact. It will go from the sucking mouth parts of an insect, like an aphid or a leaf hopper, and if that aphid or leaf hopper bites your other plants, they've got the virus too. So you've got to get these out of the garden, so that's what I did. Now luckily I have not had blight. What you see here is the beginning of early blight. 
And at the moment you see this, you need to spray with some type of anti-blight. This is early blight once it's progressed. You want to get to it before it gets to this. We've not had this problem on our new homestead. But if you have it on yours, you really got to tackle it. Now, this is late blight. And late blight will come on and just keep going and keep going and keep going. So if you don't start spraying early, if you have blight on your property, you have to start spraying early to beat it because it will come back year after year after year. So you have to spray. Daconil is my preferred anti-blight spray. I had to use it at another homestead at our other house. So yeah, uh, you have to get ahead of that blight or else it will get ahead of you. Okay, that's what you can do when you have tomato problems. Now, it's uh, one of those things that over the years, I've had every kind of tomato problem you can imagine. And for the most part, if you rotate your crop, if you go ahead and add lime to the soil, uh, those kinds of things, fertilizer, the right kind of fertilizer, you can burn them too and that will cause the leaves to brown and curl. Insects, there's a whole bunch of things that can go on with your tomatoes that you can be proactive and don't have that problem. It's very seldom that I have an insect problem with tomatoes. Uh, here in central Kentucky, we have a tobacco hornworm, and it can be a problem sometimes, but most of the time the control is going through and picking them off. That is the larva of a Colorado potato beetle. That's a full-grown larva. Here's some younger ones, and there's some younger ones. I don't see any beetles. This is just the larva. So, what am I going to do with those? Well, I'm going to take a bucket. Oh, take a bucket and put it right here. I hate to do this all bent over, but it's just going to happen. And those, and all these little black things that's on here are going in the bucket. I'll start off picking them off because these things are resistant to just about every kind of control. There's only a couple of things out there they'll kill them see just that one plant up oh, there's another one tomatoes in a row. See, here's another one. Well, we can't get to him. He's going to die the old-fashioned way. Okay. Another one. Now, I'll go down through here, down the whole row, off. Okay, see there they are in the bucket. Now, they'll do this to your plants. They'll make them wilt a little bit. The big hefty plants can generally take it a little, but see here, this one's got some damage. See, they're laying it to this one. Get these babies off here. Oh, just put the whole thing in there. I know pruning that back, pruning them leaves off. You're going, you're killing your plant? No, not really. It'll come back. 
you know, go through late in the evening and you can see them real good and just pick them off, put them in a, put them in a, a bucket and done. So, if you've got a tomato problem, I hope I've helped you in this video. Now, if you like this stuff, this homesteading, do-it-yourself kind of thing, be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe. If you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload on Sundays. Now, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.